Hello, and welcome to On My Shelf. Today I'm talking about a fantastic middle grade book that is loosely based on the history of maroon communities in the South and tells the story of survival, courage, and friendship. Free Water by Amina Lukman Dawson is the story of 12-year-old Homer, who flees the plantation where he lives and works as a slave with his mom and sister. He takes his sister Ada with him, but they leave their mother behind. Homer deals with the guilt and regret of this during their journey to escape the overseer and moving toward freedom. They find a secret community called Freewater that is hidden deep in the swamp. Freewater is a community comprised of formerly enslaved people and some children who are freeborn. Homer finds friends and allies, but he never forgets his mother. And when he learns of something that might destroy free water, he and his friends have to find the courage to save it. Free Water won the Newbery Award this year, and it's accrued a host of other awards as well. This is Amina Lukman Dawson's first book, and I am eagerly awaiting whatever she writes next. So here's what I loved about Free Water. Number one, real history. I loved that Lukeman Dawson highlighted real history. These communities aren't communities you hear about in your history books, which makes this book important for learning more about the history of the enslaved. And while we know it's a fictional story, we also know that there were likely stories that sounded a lot like this one in those days, which means readers can imagine real people in real situations. Lukeman Dawson also includes an author's note where she gives even more information about the communities on which free water is based. Number two, nowhere is perfect, not even the promised land. Homer and Ada's mother talk about fleeing north. And when they find free water, Homer thinks it's perfect. But when we see free water from other people's perspectives, we discover that it's not perfect. Because people aren't perfect, and where people are won't be perfect. Also, When you're living in what other people think is a perfect place, it's often not perfect to you. The grass is always greener and all that. Lukeman Dawson really captured that, and I loved this about free water. Number three, a story that's relatable. Even though this is a story from history, it's relatable. While most kids today likely don't know what it's like to leave behind their mother when they flee the plantation where they're slaves, they do know what it's like doing scary things, setting out on their own towing the line between child and adult, where they have to make their own decisions and live with those decisions. So while the specific details of the story were different, the emotional journey of the characters was accessible and familiar. That's when you know you've got a good historical book on your hands. From a craft perspective, there was a lot to love about Free Water. The first is multiple character viewpoints. I loved that the story was told through multiple viewpoints, so we had not only Homer, but also kids at the Freewater community and kids back at the plantation. They were very different people living very different lives, but seeing the story through the eyes of all of them made it that much richer. Not only that, but seeing the plot from different places increased the tension. You know something is happening at the plantation, but the people at Freewater don't. And that means you're waiting on the edge of your seat, hoping they don't find out too late. It's a great way to turn the pages. I also liked that Free Water had short chapters. I talk about this in a lot of my videos, but I love short chapters. Maybe it's because that's how I write, or maybe it's because that's the way I like to read. I think kids like short chapters too. My kids like getting to the end of a chapter and feeling accomplished that they just read one more chapter. They can put a bookmark in it and go about their day, and then pick the book up again when they want to read it, knowing they can probably finish another short chapter. I also enjoyed the character motivation. I've already mentioned that I loved the many different character viewpoints, but I also loved the side characters in Free Water. All of them had different motivations, some to keep the Free Water community safe, others focused on justice, and still others more selfish reasons. And there was an aura of mystery around some of them, which made me want to find out more about them. When motivations are unclear, it's a good way to keep the reader reading, trying to figure out what this character is up to. I found myself thinking, can I trust this person? And sometimes that's a powerful question to plant in a reader's mind. So here's what we can take away from Free Water. Number one, write and read more stories based on history. 
I've always loved stories that are based on real history, whether it's a movie or a book. But this book reminded me why I love them so much. It's because you get a story, but you also get a history lesson. It reminded me to pick up more books that have a historical basis, and also to think of ways I can bring history into the books I write. History in stories is one of the best ways to teach kids history. I meet so many kids at schools who say history is their least favorite subject, but when it's told in stories, they don't even know they're reading history. They just absorb it. And there's something magical about that. Number two, don't be afraid of multiple viewpoints. Most of the stories I write are written in one viewpoint, but I love reading stories in multiple viewpoints. So once again, this story reminded me that if I love reading it, why don't I try it more in my writing? It's important that each character have a different voice and a different personality, and that's what makes it appealing. You don't just get to see the world through one person's viewpoint, you see it through many. It's a great way to build empathy in readers and in ourselves. Imagining the viewpoints of other people is an exercise in walking a mile in their shoes, as the old saying goes. And we can all use more practice doing that. Number three, there's no such thing as perfect. I tend to write stories where there's not a happy ending with all the ends tied up perfectly, because that has not been my experience of life. Even when things end somewhat happily, there's still some sacrifice involved. Freewater reminded me that these are the stories of life. They're the stories kids are living, and we should tell more of them. That's it for today's On My Shelf. If you're interested in hearing an author's perspective on books, movies, and sometimes TV shows, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. <music>